The heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it like a polished mirror. It reflects whatever you put in front of it, whatever you place in front of it, whatever you get it used to. So then it will just show that reflection. And the, other th the problem with this mirror is that it really focuses on one thing at once. It can't focus on multiple things. Whatever you direct it towards, that will dominate. And everything else will be blurred. So it's a really interesting mirror. You can't see multiple things in it. The heart is a very, very focused mirror. Whatever you train it towards, that's what it will be focused on. Everything else will be a blur. You know, like they, they blur the background and the, the smart cameras that they blur the background. Right? So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns his attention to somebody and wants to draw him close, then that person's thoughts, concerns, right? Concerns, that person's concerns um, will be illuminated with the lights, the rahmah and the mercy and the lights from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een Amma ba'd To continue uh, with our series on Imam Ibn Ata'illah Al-Iskandari Rahimahullah His Hikam, His Book of Wisdom uh, We move on to chapter 2 of his book Which is page 95 for those who have a copy And today subhanallah It's wisdom number 13 It's his number 13 and it's one of my favorites it's one of the most profound ones i found in in here there's there's many profound ones but this is a really really interesting one it's really to the point extremely reflective this is what he says ibn ata'illah al-iskandari says kayfa yushriqu qalbun suwarul akwani muntabi'atun fi mir'atih kayfa yushriqu qalbun suwarul akwani muntabi'atun fi mir'atih أم كيف يرحل إلى الله وهو مكبل بشهواته أم كيف يطمع أن يدخل حضرة الله وهو لم يتطهر من جنابة غفلاته أم كيف يرجو أن يفهم دقائق الأسرار وهو لم يتب من هفواته So these are four statements saying four related things We're going to look at the first and second today uh, and try to unpack it a bit more to understand it and I think it's very very relevant to essentially humans of for, for all times and ages because this is something that we as humans fundamentally are challenged with on a day-to-day -day basis the dichotomy of this world and the hereafter the attraction of things things pulling at us, tugging at our heart attracting us, engrossing us, occupying us overwhelming us so this is what he says I'll read all of them all four statements and then we'll look at the first two he says how can the heart be illumined while the forms of creatures are reflected in its mirror how can the hearts find light and be illuminated while the forms of creatures are reflected in its mirror or how can it journey to God while shackled by its passion passions how can it desire to enter the presence of Allah while it has not yet purified itself of the stain of its forgetfulness and heedlessness? Or how can it understand the subtle points of mysteries while it has not yet repented of its offenses? It shows barriers. It shows obstacles. It shows why we can't move forward. We try, we try, we want to try. We want to move forward. We want to experience the halawat al-iman that we've heard of others experiencing. What they enjoy, what we hear of the awliya. But why can't we do it? There's an obstacle. There's a veil. There's something going on. There's shackles. And that's what he deals with in these four statements. Let's look at the first two. How can the heart be illumined? Let's start with the first one actually. How can the heart be illumined while the forms... Of creatures are reflected in its mirror he talks about the heart like a mirror being a mirror the heart is a mirror and what's the primary purpose of a mirror is to reflect 
It's to show an image of something. It's to reflect something. That's what a mirror is there for. It's for nothing else. That's what it's there for. You look at your reflection in there. It, that's the purpose of it. So, كَيْفَ يُشْرِقُ قَلْبٌ So in Arabic, it's how can a heart gain ishraq? Ishraq means brightness and illumination. And in Arabic, the word for mirror is mirat. Already. This thing is like a metaphor for the human insight, the divine insight, what a person perceives through his inner vision. And people have many forms of inner vision. Like, I'm going to argue that people have various forms of inner vision. There's a guy who you can say is really good at investments. He's going to have an, a fifth sense or a sixth sense, you could say, and an inner vision. He'll just see investments left, right and center that everybody else will be blind to. Everybody else, there's no reflection in their mirror because their mirror, their heart, is, is, is not uh, facing in that direction. It's not programmed in that direction. A builder will come along and you will see something and a builder will see something and he'll say, oh, these are the issues, these are, this is what's going on here. That reflection is there, he can see it. We can't see it. And likewise with everything else. Likewise with every other vocation. But everything but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a distraction in that sense. I'm not saying that being a, a builder is a problem or an investor is a problem. I'm just trying to show that there's an inner basira, there's an inner sense that you just suddenly start to discover these things and just see these things where others don't see it. So that's the metaphor here that the, the heart is like a mirror and the good and bad of things will reflect in it. The heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it like a polished mirror. It reflects whatever you put in front of it, whatever you place in front of it, whatever you get it used to. So then it will just show that reflection. And the, other th the problem with this mirror is that it really focuses on one thing at once. It can't focus on multiple things. Whatever you direct it towards, that will dominate and everything else will be blurred. So it's a really interesting mirror. You can't see multiple things in it. The heart is a very, very focused mirror. Whatever you train it towards, that's what it will be focused on. Everything else will be a blur. You know, like they, they blur the background and the, the smart cameras that they blur the background. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns his attention to somebody and wants to draw him close, then that person's thoughts, concerns, right? Concerns, that person's concerns um, will be illuminated with the lights, the rahmah and the mercy and the lights from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So while there's other things that he sees, but his heart will not be, will not be engrossed with those things. He'll use his sight, his outer sight, to deal with these things. Whether that be uh, his building, his investment, his driving, whatever. His cooking, their cooking, their baking. Whatever it is that they do, that's fine. But the heart is, is, is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what's being reflected in their hearts. Uh, because everything else darkens the heart, if you put it in your heart. It darkens it. It doesn't necessarily darken your sight, but it definitely darkens the heart, if you allow it to get there. This is all forms of fancies and desires and uh, basically vain dreams. Uh, so the person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened it up for, for that person, mashallah, his heart is going to be full of the light of iman, the light of ihsan. وَأَشْرَقَتْ فِيهَا أَقْمَارُ التَّوْحِيدِ The moons of tawheed, of oneness of Allah, where it's pure oneness. There's never a doubt that everything comes from Allah. Not just on an aqeedah level. Brother, you must have Tawheed al rububiyyah And you must have Tawheed al uluhiyah No, this is an experiential thing. This is what they are. They never think of anything else. It's not just, I believe that. But it's actually that I never think of anybody but Allah when it comes to it. That is why one of the poets, he says, أَغْمِذِ tarfa tara wa taluhu akhbaruk." وَفْنَ عَنْ ذِي الْوَرَى تَبْدُو لَكَ أَسْرَارُكَ 
وبسقل المراية يزول إنكارك Just keep your gaze away like lower your gaze from all of these distractions and um, the beneficial information and the, bene the beneficial points will basically come and illuminate themselves within you they'll shine within you because you wonder other people get all of these great thoughts about things why don't I? <laughs> we've not left any room for it so that's why he says just turn your heart away from everything else and you'll see that that is what will have what will start and then he says and your secrets will become clear the secrets of things what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to have will become and by polishing off any doubt any vestiges of doubt your denial of Allah will go uh, Muslims don't deny Allah but sometimes they're they feel they're forced to do that. I spoke about it some sessions ago where I said that uh, there's a confusing hadith and their iman shakes because there's doubt. The iman should not shake with a confusing hadith. You just would think, well, I'm going to find out about it. Why should your, my iman is uh, shaking right now? It's like, why is it shaking? You know, they're supposed to be confusing. A lot of people find them confusing. Then he says, الفلك فيك يدور ويضيء ويلمع ويلمع والشموس والبدور فيك تغيب وتطلع. He's basically saying that he's is uh, metaphorically saying that the the plant the plant uh, the, sorry the the planets and the stars and the suns and the moons of goodness because they express light they represent light they're all inside but you need to let them uh, let them benefit you by not putting this cover of uh, distractions in front of you. So he says that by cleaning up the mirror of your heart, Yazulu inkaruka lil haq, your denial of the true one and the truth will disappear. Fata'rifuhu fi kulli shayt. This is what I really I like this point. You will start then recognize him, recognizing Allah in everything. Because Allah is behind everything. There's nothing in this world that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not the creator, the designer, the empowerer, and so on. So and the people of Allah, they see that everywhere. Right? That's why they keep thinking of Allah. And I've sat with some people and they're always talking about Allah in the most amazing ways. And you're like, how did you think about Allah at this point? It's because that's the reality. They're seeing it directly. So everything will become very clear. فَتَعْرِفُ فِي كُلِّ شَيْءٍ فَيَصِيرُ قَلْبُكَ Yeah, so your heart will then become this place of the lights that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to give you. And then your tawheed will become very strong, right? And your recognition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will become more intense. However, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to forsake somebody and not give him this special attention because they're not looking for it, or they've committed a sin, or they've disparaged uh, or uh, violated some, spe uh, some sanctified aspect of Islam, or they've blasphemed against Allah, or they've just that committed some major, you know, major sin or whatever, then Allah says, okay, fine, I'm not going to give you my rahmah. I'm not going to give you my attention. That just means Allah forsakes them. He doesn't even have to push them anywhere. He forsakes them. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to do in absolute justice, He has the right to do that, then the person is going to become occupied with everything of the world. It will just beset your heart. It will overcome, overwhelm you. That's all you'll be thinking about night and day. And then whoever's main focus becomes the world, we get, become pushed to the world and there's no assistance with that. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. It's, it's Allah protect us. Allah protect us. It's so easy to become engrossed in the world. It's so easy. Especially nowadays when the dunya is on, I don't know what version it's on. Right? I don't know what level it's at right now. We're all in it. Right? It's, it's crazy. And of course some places are worse than others. Right? It's just dunya, dunya, dunya. Subhanallah, it's in everything, it's in everything It's just, I must get the next phone Right, that's an obsession Right, I must get a car Because everybody in my area has a nicer car Then once you've got a car, what next now? Okay, let me get a nice number plate What next? I don't know, maybe another car I don't know, I don't know where this, where this ends You know Just to give you an idea It's in everything, it's not just in this It's in everything, to, to be honest It's in everything you know, I've eaten from this place, I've eaten from, like, I pride myself of having eaten in all the great places, I know every great place, and I can 
you know, I can make YouTube videos, not me, I mean, I'm, just, but, you know, that, that's what, it's just, it's all a competition. And then you've got YouTube to go and, and blogs to go and actually tell the world about it. Cooking at home has become something that you can actually show off about now. You can literally show off about cooking at home, housewives, you know, they were just cooking at one time. Mashallah, making the people around them happy, but now you can tell the whole world and, I don't know, if there's ayn in that. You know, I'm, I'm scared of putting in my food that I'm going to eat out there because, subhanAllah, like somebody gives the eel of a lie. And evil eye is, doesn't have to be physically there, it's all by induction. I mean, subhanAllah, it could be wire, it's wireless. I mean, we're, 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 we're living in, the, uh, in a time of wireless communication. You don't need the person to look at that food physically, it could be, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. Always do dhikr of Allah whenever you've got a ni'mah. So that it can protect from the evil eye. Right? I don't, I don't want to get into the whole world of magic and everything like that, but they, they say it can, it can happen in all sorts of ways. I mean, yeah. With everything else, it does so. Why not with that? So, when that happens, that's what happens. Um, we become occupied with all of these darknesses. I mean, food is not darkness, but it can become a darkness if we get obsessed by it. And the shahwat al jismaniya, and just physical, uh, physical uh, fulfillments, physical pleasures. So then, all of these things start become etched in our heart because that's what's being reflected. Because that's where we focused our heart. So because of this, you can say because of this ex existential darkness of these things, and all of these thoughts of uh, uh, the forms of these thoughts, it's going to become a veil from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's light. So even if the light was there first, a lot of people say that when they were younger, they were better because they had gone through maktab, madrasa, whatever, and they studied the Quran and they studied and they were, and then after that, they just got into the world. So what happened is essentially that light that was there has become dimmed and dimmed and dimmed and sometimes it becomes totally extinguished. Because that veil of the world just becomes stronger. We get more and more and more into the world. So you become stronger and stronger. So you don't feel like praying anymore. Whereas two years ago, you used to feel like praying. You used to go out, you know, for three days or ten days or whatever. You used to do this. You used to go to the masjid. You used to like to listen to lectures. But you don't like that anymore. So now all you're going to see is the perceptible things because you've made yourself into a hissy person. And you've lost the ma'na and the substance. So now all your focus is in just real, you know, uh, being, just, just worldly objects. That's wala tatafakkar illa fil his. That's all you're focusing on now. You think of nothing else. So now there's two types of this. Uh, this is at two levels. One level is that this veil of this darkness becomes so strong and so thick that the light is totally extinguished, totally extinguished. So now what you're going to do is you're going to eventually deny that there was any light. Deny that any light is even existence. Absolutely, like you will deny it completely. And that is essentially where you get to kufr, where people go into a state of disbelief. That's where you lose your faith. Right? Some people recognize they've lost their faith and others don't recognize it. You know, not everybody who's lost their faith will actually come out and say, I'm a disbeliever, or I don't believe anymore. They just don't care anymore. And subhanAllah, you know, I know of a number of places in outlying areas generally, where the, the people have moved there for economic reasons, right? Or whatever, for a job or whatever, and their children, they just don't have any, you know, they, they, have, they have no intermingling with any other Muslims. It's in, in many rural areas of America, I've seen this, and I'm sure that's the case in a number of rural areas in England, right? Except in England, we've just got more cities for people, but we don't know as much. Whereas in America, it's lots of suburbs like that. And they, they, they won't even know the kalima properly. They literally won't, because they've not studied. They've just been taught by their parents a few things here and there, some basic rudimentary things about Islam. So they don't even know they've lost their faith. They're really nothing. Unless somebody opens it up to them when they get older and they mix, they, they go somewhere. I've had people, I've had at least two people in my life that I met them as adults 
and they said that the first time we met Muslims was when they were adults. Like literally, the, I mean, I've got two examples of that. The first was a uh, was a was a um, a woman, a girl who came to university and said, "This is the first time that out of my family I've met other Muslims." Right? Okay. The other one was actually a convert from Tennessee or somewhere that had become Muslim on her own, mashallah. And then she came to Santa Barbara where, where I was imam and she joined the Jum'ah and she said, the first time I'm meeting other Muslims physically, like in person. Okay, that was because, you know, she'd come, right? she wasn't put into that area by her parents, you know, in, you know, after having embraced Islam. And then there's others who will just say, look, I, I'm not a Muslim. You know? And that sometimes what happens is because they've had a bad, they've had a bad experience. Then they'll deny Islam. And they'll want they'll have a great level of animosity towards it. That's probably because they've probably more pastoral reasons. They've had a bad parents or teachers or bad experience with somebody or domestic violence or something like that. Anyway, right. The second one though is the one who, uh, it, which is not so intense. It's not as rusty. It's not as totally rusted, right? And the 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 veil is not as thick. It's actually. Uh, it allows some amount of light So it's just that the, the light has dimmed So you can't really see it But it's there somewhere right? And that is the majority of people He says This is the majority of people This is what happens It's there, they know it's there I know it's there you know. And uh, he says Of course, the people at this level now uh, th There's various levels of this Some people it's much thinner So they see more light And there's others who see some light and there's others who are in between that, right? And that's basically how close you are to Allah and how far you are. That that is what tells us. That's that is what tells us. That that is what will inform of this. That's why um, all of this you can understand from hadith. The Prophet وسلم, said there in the Quluba Yasta Kama Yasta ul Hadith. Hearts are overcome by rust, just like iron ore is. Iron is overcome by rust if you don't look after it, if you mix it with water, whatever. So that's what's going on. It's becoming rusty because we're not keeping it polished. وَإِنَّ الْإِيمَانَ يَخْلَقْ And your iman can become worn out. Wow. The iman can become worn out like clothing becomes worn and shabby and thin and maybe with holes. Right? Just like a new garment eventually becomes old and tatty. The iman can happen if you don't refresh it. Iman has to be refreshed. In another hadith, it says, Everything has a polish. Right? Your leather shoes will only last longer and retain their shape and uh, function and utility if you polish them. Right? Everything needs it, unfortunately. It's just nothing is like... Maintenance free in this world. Everything needs some kind of maintenance, subhanAllah. Everything needs maintenance. Right. Okay, if you get a better quality things, it just will last a bit longer, but eventually you need some. And that's why he says, for the heart, the polish is the remembrance of Allah. Yet another narration says, in the, uh, the famous narration, you know this one, that when a servant, whenever a servant makes a mistake, whenever they commit a sin, then, نُكِتَتْ فِي قَلْبِهِ نُكْتَةٌ سَوْدَى a black spot is placed, deposited in their hearts. And if he avoids that sin, if he turns away and abandons that sin, seeks forgiveness, then it becomes polished. That's istighfar and abandonment of the sin is a polish. Right? However, if he returns to it, then this black dot continues to appear and uh, accumulate. Until actually it will overcome the heart, overwhelm the heart. That is the rust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about in the Quran where Allah says in Surah Al Muttafifin, verse 14, that rana ala kulubin, that rust has overcome their heart uh, because of what they earn, because of what they perpetrate, because of what they do. So now when you understand from this, right, that the, the heart can only be focused on, the heart can only be given up to one thing. It can't be given up to more than one thing, right? It can only be given up to one thing. Right? I really feel sorry for those, I, I was just in Morocco, 
There's a guy walking down the street and he's selling something on a cart. And he's got a certain sound he makes. I don't even want to try to make that sound. It's like almost like a donkey sound. Right? You know, with all respect to the brother, I mean, he's making his halal living. And you've seen this, you know, uh, Sabziwala, he's going to make a certain sound. The guy who goes and uh, distributes gas canisters for, you, you know, uh, for, for, for the cooking, they have a certain. Uh, like our ice cream guys here, they play music. Down there, they make a sound. Right? They don't have that function of music or to play something. And they're just literally doing that all day. Literally doing that all day. Allah Ta'ala help us and protect us. And Allah relieve them. And find them something better to do. Right? Or a better way to do it. Some guys in the market, they're constantly saying something. They're constantly uttering something. I mean, there's the one pound fish guy. Right? And then there's three super glue for one pound. Right? And this, subhanAllah, all day long. Like imagine you're listening to this, you're saying this, you're uttering this. You could become a hafiz of the Quran. So that's what it is. It's just whatever we become so used to in this world, that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to be. So that's why he says that once you know that the heart can only focus on one thing properly at once. As I said, our eyes and our senses can focus on multiple things. Alhamdulillah, we're very versatile. We're very, very versatile and flexible in that regard. But our heart can only be focused on one thing. So he's saying that, so now if you allow it to open up to the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will be illuminated. It will shine. It will become bright. The darkness will disappear. But if you're going to let it be focused on the darknesses of this world, and it's all a darkness. When, see, everything in this world is good, could be good. But once you allow it into your heart, then it becomes bad. In the wrong way. It becomes bad. It's darkness. So, and then he says, وَلَا تَشْتَمِئُ الظُّلْمَةُ وَالنُّورُ أَبَدًا Light and darkness can never come together. It's going to be one or the other, right? One has to dominate. So, that's why he's saying, كَيْفَ يُشْرِكُ قَلْبٌ بِنُورِ الْإِيمَانِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ How can the heart become illumined by the light of Iman and Ihsan, beautification of your faith? وَالسُوَرُ الْأَكْوَانِ الظُّلْمَانِيَّةِ Whereas, the forms of all of these dark beings, they're not dark. They could be very bright, right? But they're dark because of what they do to the heart. When they're قلبي, when they're etched, they've become etched in the mirror of the heart. That's why two opposites can never, uh, can never come together. You can't, you can't ever have a confluence of those things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ahzab verse 4, مَا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لِرَجُلٍ مِّنْ قَلْبَيْنِ فِي جَوْفِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not put two hearts into any man. Because sometimes women do have two hearts. Women have two hearts. Sometimes. Have you ever seen a woman with two hearts? No? So what's he saying? It's when they're pregnant with a child. There's another heart beating there. That's what it means. Right? But obviously that's a totally separate entity, isn't it? That's why the heart, this is taken multiple ways that you can only give your heart to one. Fully and properly. So, a person who wants to gain something, aspirant of the truth, you only have one heart. If you're going to face it towards the creation of Allah, you're just going to turn it away and turn its back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you turn it towards, if you direct it, towards the haqq Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then you're obviously going to turn its back upon the people so that is where you will then be able to travel beyond this worldly shackles and gain a better understanding and get more illuminated and thus feel the sweetness of faith right? as long as you stay he says shackled and caught up in this alam with all of your desires and all of your lusts, there's no way that you can then travel to your Lord. You can't start that journey to your Lord. You're going to be stuck. And that's why he then says in that second statement, which we've not been able to cover today, Am kayfa yarhalu wa How can it journey to Allah while shackled by its passions? So how can the heart be illuminated and thus start its journey to Allah? 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala illuminate our hearts and allow us to focus and make that easy. Allah make it easy. And I think the, the, the way to do that is just to just think uh, of how far we're going and are we getting better or worse? Are we improving? Are we including more good acts in our life than we used to do two years ago or last year? And that, that, that's, that's the way to understand that and to, to test ourselves. And then just check on things that we could improve. More salats in the masjid, qada prayers, make up. Um, more, if you're already doing all the prayers, mashallah, then the salatul ishraq and tahajjud and awwabin and, and so on. If we're already giving a certain amount of charity, then more charity. Uh, nafil fasts, qada fast of Ramadan optional fasts and, and, and so on and so forth uh, but all of that comes with knowledge so you have to first increase your knowledge otherwise you don't feel like anything you don't know what's on offer down there without the knowledge may Allah make it easy Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarak tayyad al-jalali wa ikram Allahumma ya hayyu ya qayyum bi rahmatika nastaghik Allahumma ya hannan ya mannan la ilaha illa ant subhanaka inna kunna min al-zalimin Allah have your mercy upon us. O oh Allah, we ask you and beseech you and implore you for your mercy, for your generosity, for your special attention. O oh Allah, for your forgiveness. O oh Allah, for purity from you, for your life of taqwa from you. O oh Allah, forgive us all of our wrongdoings, our misdeeds. O oh Allah, our transgressions. O oh Allah, our heedlessness, our procrastination. O oh Allah, our denials, our doubts. O oh Allah, our inactions. O oh Allah, we ask you to forgive our sins, especially those sins that bring darknesses in our life. O oh Allah, that turn people against one another, that remove the blessing and that invoke calamities upon us. O oh Allah, we especially ask you forgiveness from those sins that have become part of our life and we no longer see them as sins anymore. O oh Allah, grant us a true understanding of our purpose in this world. O oh Allah, grant us a true understanding. O oh Allah, we ask that you allow us to rise to the challenges and you protect us from the evils which are out there and especially our us and our children and our progeny until the day of judgment. O oh Allah, um, as we are part of this country, we have a new king and O oh Allah, we ask that you guide him and you give him tawfiq, and you make him beneficial. And O oh Allah, you make his reign a beneficial one. And O oh Allah, we ask that you allow us to prepare for the, for the hereafter. We allow us to prepare this life for the hereafter. And you allow our hearts to be focused. And you and for your light, for, uh, for them to become a recipient of your light. O oh Allah, and to be illuminated. O oh Allah, uh, protect us from our distractions You have given us abundantly More than so many others in this world O oh Allah we ask that you do not make it a burden for us Or a trial for us what you have given us O oh Allah this new, new projects that we have This new masjid project we have The new white thread center we have O oh Allah allow that to be completed Allow all the other projects of all the other masajid and institutes to be completed and protect them all from the evils which are out there and the challenges which are out there, especially in the indo pak subcontinent. And O oh Allah, the floods, O oh Allah, the floods that have devastated so many people. O oh Allah, grant them a relief. O oh Allah, grant them an understanding. And O oh Allah, grant them strength in their faith to withstand this and beautiful patience and perseverance. And O oh Allah, grant them an an opening and a release from this. And O oh Allah, allow us to be helpful in the right way, in the right capacities for whatever is happening around the world and accept us for the service of your deen. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamu ala al-musayim alhamdulillah. The point of a lecture is to encourage people to act, to get further, an inspiration, an encouragement, persuasion. The next step is to actually start learning seriously to read books, to take on a subject of Islam and to understand all the subjects of Islam, at least at their basic level, so that we can become more aware of what our deen wants from us. Uh, and that's why we started uh, Rayyan courses, so that uh, you can actually take organized lectures uh, on demand whenever you have free time, especially, for example, the Islamic Essentials uh, course that we have on there, the Islamic Essentials Certificate, which 
you take 20 short modules and at the end of that inshallah you will have gotten the, the basics of uh, most of the most important topics in Islam and you'll feel a lot more confident. You don't have to leave lectures behind, you can continue to, leave, uh, you know, to listen to lectures, but you need to have this more sustained study as well. Jazakallah khair and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.